thing this is my favorite one the tree uh, the transport tape right the 3m transport tape um what happens with um contamination with tape is that what nurses do put it in their what stethoscope pocket right and also when you um when you tape it uh when you do release the tape from the roll people tend to put it where at inanimate objects like this what happens is that whatever is on the you know the gloves or, or over here um what happens is that you grab it and it stays on the tape and then you put it on your patient's skin correct so to prevent that as much as possible we so what like do we want to do we want to do a base tape first can everybody see mm -hmm. a base tape right here and then you can put everything on usually the length of the hand right and then what do you do so I want to usually now for stopping bleeding then you want you want a fat tape we call this okay but for to um, stabilize an IV you want like really half inch okay and it can easily and it can easily what tear apart all right all righty thank you there you go it should be like this I know it looks funky like this but you, you know you just grab it but make sure it doesn't touch anything it's nothing but air okay nothing but air good good here we go ladies so before we take out before we take out the needle we got to do two things correct what are the two important things so you don't bleed out your patient okay so tourniquet pressure and then we can remove the needle correct now do we leave it hanging like this no we gotta connect your primed, you gotta connect your um, saline lock. If you turn the hub, everything will come out, okay? So you hold on to the hub and you turn the clear only. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Everything should be in there, okay? No catheter should be out. If catheter is out, that means you turn the hub. Again, in different settings, you might just what? Connect the what? The primary instead of the heplock, okay? But uh, in most inpatient, stay is about three days or more than we use the heplock. Why? Because you can just disconnect, you can just disconnect the, mm -hmm. the heplock and then the, your patient can walk over, uh, like walk around more independently. Will this survive if the patient moves? Yeah. No, no, we need to what? We need to tape it up. Now the first, the first thing you want to do is you want to reassure the patient. We're like 80% done. Please don't move. Right. At this point, they're irritated with you. They're like, oh, what? Right. I'm going to show the tegaderm. The first tape. The first tape to go in your IV. Now, this, you can have it open already in your sterile field. So you can just grab it. Just, so when you grab it, you just want to make sure that it covers, it provides a window. It's just like a second skin. We do not throw this away because this is the label. People do complain. If it's crumpled, so what do you do? You have it stretch and stretch, just cover some portion of the whole of the hub, portion of the saline lock, and just make sure that it's not crumpled by following it with, with your finger. There it is. Ta -da, ta -da. Again, don't throw the label. Yay, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. So you can see, just it provides a lovely window. If there's any complications, we can see it. Now, if it's a little blood, just wipe it off. Alrighty. So now we're going to use our lovely tape that we did. So the first tape that we want is the usually you guys have a handout for this usually nurses stick with one so if you do a so stick your side up and if you do a u if you do a u um shape is what what is it called ladies it's the u method <laughs> now if you crisscross it then what is that called the, v method. the chevron method I know it should be a blue method, but it is, no. Chevron, so choose whatever you wanna do, okay? And then we're just gonna frame everything. 
around the tegaderm just to give it extra extra support so it doesn't lift so frame you again we're using half inch tape mm -hmm. it's the one inch that we cut half inch tape the one inch that we cut right here do you guys see this ta-da yes. so the for, uh, first one always is the tegeter, right? Because it provides a window. It gives it a second skin protection. And then we have either the sticky side up, that you can go, whatever you want, H method, U method, chevron. And then we kind of just tape it around. We have a lovely border. Whenever we tape, we want to check for what? Patency if it's flushing well, correct? Mm -hmm. Check for bubbles. And if it's flushing mm -hmm. well, that means you taped it correctly where it doesn't include. Okay? So we're going to continue. So we taped around mm -hmm. the site, which is important. But we got to stabilize this. I have a du double lumen, double port hep block right here. And so I'm going to have to tape it in a way that mm -hmm. it doesn't include. So instead of like having a sharp U like this, you want to do a nice big... You, what I'm talking about right here. Are we? Um, yeah. So you want to do all the locks. You want to make sure the locks are not taped, right? So you want to make sure and you don't tape the ports, correct? You only tape this, and it's usually the neck. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to tape it, so you don't and you do not cover the window. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You guys are doing good. So. Right here, grab a neck so, you can, so your coworkers can still access the port. What you're gonna do is called the kiss. So you take your half inch and you kind of just kiss it at the bottom and then you flare it out. You see that flare it out. Again, the lock should be out of the way right here. And then nice big U. And if you have enough skin, see? See this kiss right there? Mm -hmm. What happened is that when you pull it, it pulls on the kiss. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So let me show you the let me show you the kiss again. Kiss is like this. This is the neck. This is the neck of the ports of your hip lock. So you just kind of grab it and then you circle around the tube. You kiss it at the bottom and you flare it. And then you kind of stick it in like this. Mm -hmm. And to make to even stabilize it even more, you're gonna what? You're going to provide another layer of tape on top of the kiss. So the kiss is there. Just provide another. But do not cover the window. Okay, so you see how wonderful and clean. And then when we pull it, it pulls on the kiss. It doesn't pull on the site. Time for the label. Hey, because you did such a good, your patient was patient with you and you did it quite fast. And so now it's time to move on, get it done. Because this is not your only patient. This is one of your seven patients. You got to attend to. Other, other three are screaming at you. Here we go. So we got to put the label on. So what do we put in the label? It depends on your hospital or facility policy. It's usually your na uh, initial date and time and the site. You know, left hand, left forearm. One important note about the label, do not write on your patient. That hurts. So right away from your patient, and it should be on top of everything else. Don't put tape on top of your label. Everybody has to see it, okay? Because usually IVs have expiration dates, right? It's usually 72 hours. You have to change the site. Of course, you have to get a doctor's order if you want to keep it in. If it's such a beautiful site, we tend to keep it in. There we go. Ultimate test of your taping is to what? Check the flow. 
it's paid and it's flushable. Oh, look at that. It's nice and it just goes in. That means I tape well. I did not occlude anything. And now you can do the lovely locking. Okay. I have a double port. So I, I'm just going to check the other one. Okay. So if you have double port, you got to check each. There we go. Okay. To check, can you make sure you kind of pull on your, so it, nothing should move. Your IV should not move, nothing should move. 